Welcome to Sikorsky's Think About. And I'm your host, Laura Sikorsky, and thank you so much for clicking in today. Greatly appreciate it. My goal is for our guests and I to share our expertise and think abouts that will help you provide outstanding customer service and experiences to your customers using people, processes, and technology. Today, our guest is Barbara Cohen-Farber, and Barbara, you may recognize, is a returnee and so excited. <laughs> she is the Executive Director of Administration or Administrative and Human Resources at Lloyd Staffing, and Barbara has 30 years in the biz, and so Scary that's, <laughs> uh, yeah, but that makes you an expert in your field, and for that I, I really appreciate your taking the time this morning. Uh, she is sought after by her clients in finding the right candidate for her the skills and background, and most of all, this word today, cultural fit. And I think that's extremely important today in the business environment. Barbara has demonstrated outstanding commitment to developing the Long Island workforce. She's an active member of, I always call it SHRIM, S-H-R-M, which is, and she's part of their readiness committee. She was also honored by Long Island Business News, a publication well uh, read here on Long Island for, with the award 50 around 50 award. And that really is great because it's for outstanding achievements. Today, we are really gonna have a a great int a real interesting topic and that is the value of interns I think an intern adds so much to an organization but it gives them such a great start in the business world and so with that Barbara you're on well I think having been in placement for many many years um, we often see recent college grads that are terrific but have absolutely no office experience whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, they may have been lifeguarding, they may have worked in a retail store, they may have been waitressing, um, and they're definitely at a disadvantage when they're entering the job market and they have no real office experience. So interning is definitely a way for that student um, while they're still in school, hopefully, um, to get some good office experience that they can use. And I, that is so valuable. I know, I remember when I first started out and work, going to work, I was in retail in the beginning, but my first job was in an office. I didn't really know how to act, mm -hmm. how to dress, I mean, how to pick up the phone and say, thank you for calling X company. So these are all basic skills that you as a company, if you would like to hire your interns are going to give back and certainly for the intern as they progress in their schooling and their careers. Absolutely. So talk about the benefits of the student. Well, I mean, for the, student. Uh, the obvious is really to get a learning experience, um, as you said, to learn how to answer the phone, to learn how to act. I mean, you know, it's just to be given their own little cubicle. They get very excited about having their own space yeah. um, and not just shadowing someone. You know, people may have gone to the office with their parents over the years, you know, bring your child to work day, things mm -hmm. like that. But that's not the same thing because this is actually an opportunity for them to to do real work. Um, I they, like how you said real work because <laughs> it's, real work, tr yes. it's true. I, you know, if you if you're coming from a, you know a, a home environment or you have only been to school and you see people in cubes or in offices, but you you know you really don't understand what real work is. You Absolutely, know, the, the nine to five mm -hmm. and an hour for lunch and all that kind of good you stuff. You know, they don't get to take naps during the day no, like they do no. when they're in school <laughs> and um, no texting. Exactly, you know, their cell phones have to be away and they really have to you know adhere to the same rules that take place within that office mm -hmm. um, it's a great way for them to really learn about a particular field um, if they're in school and they are studying human resources, for example, you know, they might want to work in a corporate human resource department. They might want to work for a staffing firm like Lloyd Staffing. Um, maybe someone is studying accounting and they might want to be an intern at a CPA firm. Mm -hmm. You know, so it gives them an opportunity to really see what that field is all about. Um, it gives them an opportunity to put things on their resume that will definitely 
be the conversation uh, when they're on that first interview. Everyone that is interviewed, they don't, I mean, they'll look briefly that maybe you worked at Macy's all through school and you worked at this, you know, waitressing job all through school. And they like that you have been steadily working. Right. Um, but when they see a corporate office, especially in the field that you're now interviewing for, that's the one that they will hone in on and that's the one they'll ask questions mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm. um, and it definitely makes them more and marketable. It and it, I was just going to say that it makes them appear and most definitely are more suited Absolutely. Or it might be the reverse. They may find that, that oh, they don't like that it. They don't like it mm -hmm. and suddenly say, well, maybe I don't want to be an accountant or a CPA. Maybe I want to learn something else. Exactly. I saw another area in this company that mm -hmm. I liked more. Mm -hmm. So it really gets, excuse me, it really gives the student an eye opener Absolutely. as to what their career path may or may not, mm -hmm. may not be. Uh, Proficiency skills. Let's talk about that. What, is, what do you mean by that? Well, part of it is just phone skills, mm -hmm. um, but maybe they've taken a lot of Excel classes and they've never really had an opportunity to use it. And they may come into the office environment and be asked to create a spreadsheet or update a database or, you know, really use the program differently than just a class or write a business letter in word mm -hmm. i mean you know that takes a skill you Absolutely. know it's not just uh, letter format things right. like that right how to the the this punctuation the salutations mm -hmm. and all that absolutely and definitely making contacts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's I tell all of my interns, you know, connect with all of us here at Lloyd on LinkedIn. You know, you never know who's going to be able to help you at some point. Absolutely, totally agree. Now, the benefits to the employer, and the, I believe there are many. I mean, you've just listed a few. There are many. Um, one and a very obvious one is finding future employees. Uh, definitely, we have hired some of our interns. Uh, there are some companies out there that only look to their base of interns before they go to the, they outside. Go to the outside. But before we, we went on camera, you were saying that you started the intern program at Lloyd. So you, yes. she practices what she <laughs> preaches here, folks. And I, you know, tell us a little bit about how you decided that you wanted to do interns at Lloyd? Well, I've always, always been involved in training. Mm -hmm. I've, um, back when I was going to college, my initial thought was that I was going to be a teacher. There were no teaching jobs back then, and so I ended up switching my major and never pursuing the teaching. But it's just something that I've always enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, it's also the reason I've always stayed with the administrative level of placement, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of that involves coaching. Um, as opposed to placing executives. I mean, there's some coaching, but it's not the same. Right. I mean, I, I work with administrative assistants, secretaries, executive assistants, receptionists, even entry-level college grads. And a lot of what I do in placing them is coaching on how to dress and how to fix their resume and how to answer certain questions. Mm -hmm. So it's just something that I've always enjoyed. So that is, it becomes an extension in that you have hired interns for yourself, but you also can guide other students to where they may want to go to be an intern. Absolutely. Excellent. So um, obviously it's to support the students, but let's talk a little bit about giving back to the community. What, what are you talking about in this as for the employer? Well, similar to being on the Workforce Readiness Committee for SHRM, I know you said SHRM. SHRM. I don't I know why SHRM. I always... <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's a way to really work with the students in the local community and prepare them for the job market. You know, it gives them an opportunity to be in the workforce while they're still students. And I think that being that my career has always been putting people to work, if we can get more students more workforce ready when they graduate, then everyone will be happy. Everyone will be happy. And of course, it's good for, your, for the employer that they're... Absolutely. I mean, I've had interns that never even knew what a staffing firm was. Say. Um, you know, they may have been referred to me by their college because I have relationships with some of the colleges and they are interested in human resources or they're interested in, you know, just general business. Mm -hmm. And they 
don't realize the other side of human resources being the staffing firm. How many interns do employers usually have on staff? It really depends on the company. It depends. Um, you know, a company like Lloyd Staffing, you know, we may have a handful over the summer and during the school year I may be the only one with an intern. Um, it really does vary. Does, it does vary. You know, my son is actually um, in school for accounting and he has an internship lined up and that particular firm that he's going to be working for in New York City is hiring hundreds of interns. Wow. And they pull from all the different colleges in the accounting programs and that's where they look to find their future employees. Now, uh, interns can be paid, correct, or not paid. Yes. What is the, what is the norm in, let's say, out here um, in Long Island? There isn't really a norm. No, um, okay. It's either paid or not paid. Um, <laughs> it's one or the, the other. <laughs> yes. Uh, there are companies that do pay their interns, and other companies work with students that earn credit. And so, so that's school credit for the school it. credit. Oh, okay, so it's actually, for example, I'm working with a student now who's my current intern. She goes to school at Farmingdale, and she is earning three credits for an internship class. And it's a required class. That that you know that really makes you know, sense. You know, so she ha you know I have to evaluate her. I you know she has to keep certain logs. You know there are different requirements mm -hmm. for different interns. Mm -hmm. So, folks, why you should hire an intern? I mean these these are just some of the uh, discussion points that we have for you this morning, but. Let's talk about it. I mean, I think the first one you have down here, it's fresh new ideas. And I think there's something about a young student, you know, or a young person, when they come into a company, they're so vibrant and they're mm -hmm. so excited, you know. And many times companies out there just need that extra, you know. Well, you might be doing something the same way for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how great is it for a student to say, have you ever considered doing it this way? Or why don't we change this report? Um, because I think it would be easier to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, and the experienced people there, you know, sometimes they're going through their day and they're not always thinking about changing things. Yeah, and sometimes and you change just is good. And you have to step back and say, well, you know what? I think they're right. You mm -hmm. know, and don't just go, oh, what do they know? They're a student. Mm -hmm. You have to really value what that input is because Absolutely. it's fresh eyes. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. How oh, their experience with technology. Uh, <laughs> Almost too much technology. Well, I mean, we've gotten very big into social media and Lloyd Staffing has a LinkedIn page and we have a Facebook page and we are very involved in keeping ourselves up to date. Mm -hmm. And we look to our interns sometimes to help us with doing certain things. You know, now we're putting videos up, we now have a YouTube channel, um, and it's really been a lot of the interns that we look to and we ask advice, you know, on where, do, where are people looking? What's popular these days? And why are they going you know? there? And why aren't they going what we would think is the traditional place You know, we to thought go. Facebook was so terrific and then learned that, you know, the kids in their 20s are more into Instagram than they are into Facebook. You know, so we do both because we have a broad right. audience, but, mm -hmm. you know, we do Instagram now as well. See? Perfect. Uh, trial period. And we talked a little bit about that, that you already, um, you know, that your interns are hired right away. And I think that's an excellent way to, to, to show an intern this is a great ending. It's not well, just going back to school. We've had interns that interned, you know, their junior year and then came back to us. And in some cases, we've placed them in jobs. Mm -hmm. And we've had interns that have come to us their spring semester of senior year which means when they're done with their internship, they've actually just graduated from school and we've and hired ready. them. See, perfect. And of course, um, you know, they are brand advocates Absolutely. when they get back to school. So what do you look for in an intern? I would say someone very high energy, someone very eager to learn, uh, someone that's interested in your particular field. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about this briefly. I look at 
business majors, human resource majors, um, psychology majors, whereas a CPA firm is going to look for an accounting major. Are there specific industries that look for interns? No, I think some companies do and, and some don't. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it has anything to do with industry. With the industry. It's I don't, just a matter I don't think of so. personal preference. Yeah, I don't think so. So why you should not hire an intern? Well, I think one of the biggest reasons is if you don't have the time to mentor that intern, mm -hmm. it's really not helpful at all. If an intern, I mean, I've spoken to people who have interned at other companies and, you know, they're sitting around a lot, they don't have work to do, mm -hmm. uh, their boss is never really available, um, you know, to coach them or have them sit in on listening to different things. Um, it's really, if you, if you don't sad, feel you have yeah. the time to do it, you know, they're not there for free labor. Right, you know, they right. really are there. That you have to really put yourself in their shoes, or mm -hmm. even in the shoes of their parents, right. or their <laughs> teachers, you know, yes. their professors. What are you getting out of this? You know, is this a learning experience for this Yeah, student? what is your ultimate goal mm -hmm. in becoming an intern? Absolutely. And then, you know, to the, to the company, if it's not going to help the intern, mm -hmm. it should not be done. Exactly. Yeah, don't just... Exactly. And I believe on Long Island, uh, the Moxie Network, they have a foundation. Yes, they, they do. do. I just got a letter in the mail about yeah. that today. So, folks, if you're looking, uh, you know, to help out with Moxie and, uh, you know, helping them. Uh, That's a mentoring program. Mentoring program. It's a little different than an internship. But they hire the mentors, don't they, uh, on Moxie, don't the mentors help the... They work with um, the school, the volunteers, and, volunteers, and then they work okay. with the students. Okay. But it's more of a mentoring program. It's more of the mentor, the... Oh, they're, okay, I understand. So, how do you get started? I'm a company and I'm like, oh wow, Barbara was so exciting today <laughs> and she wants me to, you know, I'm really thinking about interns and I know a little bit more about them and the value. How do I get started? Well, I think the first thing you have to do is decide where this intern would work within your particular organization, mm -hmm. who it would report to, and a clear definition of what their job description would be. You so know, that when they come in the first day, they're not saying, oh, well, you just sit here for a while and we'll, we'll get back to you. Exactly. They need to have a program, some type of a schedule. And a, the, and a trainer, you know, that the, whoever they're reporting to should be, mm -hmm. you know, ready and able to take this person under their wings and have them, you know, in my case, sit in on interviews or, you know, work on databases or look at resumes on the job boards, things like that an understanding what mm, what they're doing and what they're doing um, you know make the contacts with their local colleges and universities and I, I mean believe that's one of the best ways to really get the students during the school year um, because obviously if they go to a local school they probably live nearby and they you know go to school sure. nearby and if you can find a school that's pretty close to your office I think that works well because you know maybe they have classes in the morning and they can come to you right after the class mm -hmm. you know plus it's easier to get there you know I'm sure many of them are maybe day students so they have to drive mm -hmm. so they have a car and they can you know go to a local business. But there's less time traveling if you do work with schools that are you know pretty close, close by to you know but if you're looking to do summer interns it really doesn't matter what school they go to right um, but you still get your base comes from the college and universities you don't advertise for interns do you uh, do we have you uh, so you would put it we, in the newspaper we have we probably put it on our Facebook page uh -huh. we put it you know in so you know in our social media um, venues but you know getting the word out there that you're looking mm -hmm. um, is probably the best way I mean we I do not have an intern yet for the summer, so I would be looking for an intern to probably start come, you know, May, June. Mm -hmm. Our technology department often looks for an intern as well. Our marketing department looks for an intern. And we would really just get the word out there. We found a lot of our interns from our other interns, and we kind of charge them with recruiting 
sure. people that might be a year behind them or, or something like that. And you know like that, that they understand what an intern does. So when they're talking to one of their, their mates in mm -hmm. school, you know, that this is something that they've had experience with. Well, I actually, have you, I have my interns um, help me interview the next intern um, and, you know, help recruit, help when they come in, they do the first interview. I don't even sit in on it because I want them to get used to interviewing. Mm -hmm. um, and then we evaluate, you know, and Perfect. then once they start, I usually have them overlap if I can and have them train them. I had so, one intern. So they really are getting the full circle. Absolutely. I had one intern actually do a manual. I didn't even ask her to do it. And she literally wrote down everything in like a binder for a future intern. <laughs> Wow. Well, I can't believe it. We are just about out of time. But I'd like us to recap our thinkabouts from today. And for students, it's the ability to have a great business experience on your resume. I think that's extremely important. It's valuable for networking. Uh, you can put what you've learned in the classroom. You spoke about mm -hmm. you know, the Excel or the programs that you were maybe taking, and you actually see it in the real world. And you may just get a full-time job. So I think that's a, a great think about. And of course, an employer, you know, you get a fresh perspective, a new idea. You know, doing the same thing over and over mm -hmm. again gives you that sense of, okay, let's try it. You know, and the thing is, is I've always um, kind of valued somebody that comes to me and says, I would like to suggest this. And, you know, in your mind, you say, well, maybe that uh, not such a good idea. But you know what? Let's do it. And then if it fails, a valuable lesson. If it's successful, mm -hmm. you've got a great employee for life. But we do have a Twitter question that uh, came in. And this is kind of a, an odd one to ask. Okay. But what if an intern doesn't work out? What are your options? I mean, I know I would feel really <coughs> bad. <laughs> well, I think the first most important thing is that you have a conversation with this intern if there's something that's not working. Mm -hmm. um, if your goal in all of this and their goal is to get real work experience, then they should be treated somewhat like an employee. So in other words, if an intern is coming in late every day, you know what? Bring that intern in and have a a sit down mm -hmm. and discuss it. Yeah, this is not fun. This is not a game. This you know, is the real world. You here. know, I noticed you've been 10 minutes late and, you know, it's not acceptable, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I think that's probably the most important advice. I mean, I'm sure there are times where, you know, an employer has to release an intern and just say, you know, this is just not working. Um, but I would hope that the employer takes the time to really coach the person right before and they explain, make that you know final what decision. they've done wrong exactly they may not think you know anything of 10 minutes late you yeah, right. It's like, <laughs> I'm always late, so yeah, what difference does it make yeah, if I'm they're, late for Maybe work. they're the kind of kid that goes to class 10 minutes late all the right. time. Well, I have to say this has been an absolute wonderful show. I thank you again so much thank you. for coming in this morning. And uh, folks, to reach Barbara, you can uh, at Lloyd Staffing. Lloyd Staffing. <laughs> be Cohen Barbara at LloydStaffing.com. Her office number is 631 three seven zero seven three seven five and certainly you can search for her on LinkedIn and uh, at Twitter what uh, I encourage you to do is that if you'd like to get more information about interns is to please reach out directly to uh, to Barbara I'm sure she'll be happy to help you certainly to reach me I'm direct at Twitter at, at Laura Sikorsky and for that I'm looking for people if you would like to be a guest on the show or if you have a topic for the show. And always, I want to thank the Daily Blue and Blue Chip market, Marketing, Corinne Caro, who's the founder and president, our camera guy today, Mike. How you doing? Thanks so much. He's gave me the thumbs up, good so that job, means Mike. our show was good today. And uh, for that, uh, I want to thank you for clicking in. And next week, we're going to talk about the power of networking. So it is, uh, it is marketing, it is customer service, it is selling, and it's a lot of very, very different things. So with that, I want to thank you all for clicking in and have a perfect day.